Good morning and a special welcome and thank you to Michelle Kish for providing part of our prelude music. And Michelle will be back later providing us some more music during the service too. So um, thank you to you, Michelle, for, for doing that for us. It's a great day to be here, and we are so, so glad to have you here this day. Um, it's a special day for us today, as well as hearing from another one of our young adults who went on the adult mission trip and who has some insights to share with us a little bit later on that. And then we'll continue hearing a little bit about the story of Joseph and um, where we left him off last week in the pit. We'll find out what happens. Um, not to be suspenseful, but it all turns out okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great time to be here, and we thank you for your presence, especially welcoming any of those that you may be visiting with us this morning, and welcoming those who are with us virtually online this morning. We welcome you and hope that you feel God's presence during this time of worship. As we begin today, please stand for the order for confession and forgiveness as we cleanse our hearts and minds and prepare for worship. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. When we were dead in sin, God made us alive together with, in Christ. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell what God has done for you. Amen. So now let us join our tongues with uh, the thousands of others who sing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, hymn 886.
brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. of the church for the unity of all for this holy house for all who worship and praise let us pray to the Lord let us pray to the Lord Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way Kyrie That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison. peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our works and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord, Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way, Kyrie For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son 
to love the world with compassion and consistency that your name may, may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we continue our worship as we listen to God's word. Good morning. The reading is from the 45th chapter of the book of Genesis. After Judah offered himself in place of his brother Benjamin, Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able to receive the gospel. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. 
Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the law sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is a great privilege and an honor to be part of this congregation that reaches out all the time. And not that many years ago, our adult mission trip came to, into being. There were adults in this congregation that heard year after year about our high school youth and our junior high kids going out on mission, and they said, why can't we do that? Why are they having all the fun? And so they organized um, an adult mission trip. One of those people who's been a part of that is Spencer, and he is here to talk about his experiences on the adult mission trip. Spencer, why don't you come up and talk to us? Uh, good morning. Uh, as she said, my name is Spencer Schmidt, and this summer I went on the adult mission trip. Uh, so I've been going to this church my entire life, and I was one of those kids who was going on the junior high and the high school mission trips. And then when I went, to, went away to college, I thought, okay, I guess that's the last mission trip I'll be going on for at least a while. And then while I was there, my mom contacted me and said, hey, they're starting up this adult mission trip thing. You want to do it? And I said, sure. <laughs> Don't know if it was a good decision or not, but I went. Um, I was one of four people from our congregation to join up with Peace Lutheran Church, uh, a church in Lake Zurich that we've gone with ever since. And it, it was... It was kind of the same and kind of different. So when people ask what we do on the mission trips, the only thing that's completely applicable to everyone is that we go to serve for the glory of God and doing whatever the community needs. For this trip, that meant going and partnering with Motor City Blightbusters. That, that's an organization that was founded by a man named John George to build his community. He uh, when he was, when he started it, 20 or so years ago, he lived near a he lived near an abandoned building where they were um, doing various shady things, and he saw people going in and out 
on a daily basis and said, I don't want my children to grow up near that. So he decided to go and board up the house. And he actually had neighbors come by and say, hey, can we help you? And at that point, he started helping out further. Uh, we didn't do anything nearly that colorful on our trip. Uh, most of what we did was more along the lines of painting, building fences, tearing down sheds, clearing brush, cleaning storage units. Basically, we go there and we use our skills, our talents, and our willingness to serve to do whatever they, they need. For me, when I started out, actually, to better put it, some people have great skills. They've been doing it in trade. They've been fixing up things around their house for 20 years. When I started out on the adult trips, I hadn't been breathing for 20 years. So I, I kind of didn't have the, have the same abilities that they did. What I, I brought, what I brought was my talents, namely my height. I got, I've gotten to know ceilings very well over the years at the various places. This past year, um, there was a point where I was painting the ceilings of, we were painting next to the ceiling of Lynn. There was another point where I was painting the ceilings next to a guy who had fallen off a roof a year and a half before, thinking, I don't want to be here, but I want him here even less. <laughs> um, and the other talent I have is just being big, which was with, for the clearing out shed, we literally tore down a rat infested shed. And the owner of the, the owner of the house was so appreciative that after we'd taken it, taken it out, when we were so disgusting that I didn't even want to look at me, she came and gave us a hug and said, thank you. I had been wanting this gone. I was afraid to go in my backyard because I knew there were rats there and you've taken that away, so now I can use my yard again. Um, through, also th through it, there are other appre appreciative people. Uh, there was a man named Big Dave who, he went to the church that we stayed at, which was 15 or 20 minutes away from Detroit, and he, he just knew we were there, so he decided he, we were there to help out his community, Detroit. So he came and dropped off ga uh, Gatorade so we would have something to, to drink. And just the, just, he was there for 20, 30 minutes talking to us about all the, all of the stuff that we, all the ways we were being helped. And it, the trip was a bit different than I expected, but it was a great trip, and I'm glad that I've gone. Uh, for future, for f if you have any interest in future trips, we will be uh, determining location and signups around the beginning of the year, so keep your eyes, eyes and ears open. And no matter what you, ha what you think you have to come to the table, you have something you can do for if you want to go on the trip. So don't let your perceived deficiencies stop you from going. Because, as I said, I have height. <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. <laughs> Any questions for Spencer? Nothing? Okay. Thank you, Spencer. We appreciate it. I especially appreciate being a short person, especially appreciate people being tall. And very often around my kitchen or even around here, we'll be going and looking around the crowds and going, ah, tall person, tall person over here. So thank you, Spencer. And I know Spencer's helped out in, on things here also. As I listened to Spencer talk and I thought about and hearing some of the other stories from other participants, especially this year in Detroit, um, hearing about the Motor City Blightbusters, um, I thought about the founder of that, John George, and how persistent he has been in his community. 
that he is persistent that he will not give up on his community, that he will persist in making it a better place. And that brought some things to mind as I thought about continuing our story of Joseph today. Last week, we left off with Joseph in a pit and being sold off to the traders. And this week's um, lesson picks up six chapters later in Genesis. Those are good chapters to go back and read about the story of Joseph because it involves a lot. And in a thumbnail sketch, here's what happens to Joseph. He's sold off. He goes to Egypt. And he becomes, um, he's sold off to Potiphar. And Potiphar is, in today's language, he is the king's chief of staff. Now, in our world today, you know that chiefs of staff don't last very often. Um, but Potiphar lasted for a while, and he was there and doing all sorts of things. And he got a hold of Joseph, and Joseph had amazing talents. He had great talents in business and organization, and he continued to have great faith. He persisted in his faith. And even through all of the things that he went through, Joseph continued to work for the good of the people there in Egypt. Potiphar's wife makes a play for him. He refuses and resists, but he's thrown in jail when she accuses him. But even in jail, things continue to work for the good in the end. Because the king's baker and the king's personal assistant also end up in jail. This king is one who throws his people into jail quite a lot. And there, they become acquainted with Joseph because Joseph is the one who had interpreted his own dreams, and now he hears the dreams that they are having and interprets them for him. They eventually get out of jail, and he says, just remember me when the king asks, you know, put in a good word for me, which for a while they forget, but then the king begins to have dreams that no one can interpret. And they remember, ah, this guy in jail, that Joseph in jail, you remember? He interprets dreams, and so they brought him up. And he interpreted the king's dreams, which ended up that there would be seven years of famine. And Joseph said, you know, if you were a good organizer, you'd prepare for this. You'd prepare for seven years of famine so that when this happens, you won't be stuck. And who gets put in charge of it? Joseph. You know, the people who speak up, you put them in charge. <laughs> so here he is in charge of all of this. And it ends up very well because there's a lot of grain that is stored. And when the famine hits, all of the people there in the community are fine. In fact, even as far away as Joseph's hometown, they are hit with this famine. But they know that in Egypt, they have grain. So Jacob sends his sons, not all of them, but 10 of them, to go buy grain in Egypt. And who do they run into? They run into Joseph. At first, they don't recognize Joseph because 20 years has passed. 20 years has passed. And Joseph, he's been looking like an Egyptian now, too. And Joseph toys with them a little bit, throws them in jail, holds them for ransom, because he realizes that the one son, the one full brother, that he has. Benjamin is the one that they've left at home, and he wants to see Benjamin very badly. He sends them back and tells the people when they fill their sacks with grain to also put their money bags back in the grain sacks. When they uncover this, they realize that their money is still there. They're terrified because they think, oh my gosh, they're going to think we stole all this. 
And then they begin to wonder to themselves, are we in this trouble because of what we did to our brother that many years ago? You know, is it coming round to roost? But they go back with their brother Benjamin. And then it is that this scene takes place. The scene where Joseph finally says, I'm Joseph, I'm your brother. And it ends up with tears and hugs and weeping on each other's shoulders. And Joseph says, the things that you intended for harm, God has turned to good. So here we are this day. And what we have, I think, is a persistent, if we look through the story, a persistent Joseph who persists in his faith and continues to try and look for the good to do for the community. He still has that tinge of the Eddie Haskellish kind of personality because he's like sending him back, you know, go back and tell my dad how important I am. You know, but <clears throat> persistent he is. Which leads into the gospel reading today too. We have disciples who are seemingly persistent in their non-understanding of the parables that Jesus says. We have Pharisees who are persistent, with persistence growing about the fact that they don't really like this guy Jesus and the stuff that he's saying. And then we end up with the story of the persistent Canaanite woman. At the end of the school year, this last year, in the spring, um, Charlie's preschool teacher told his parents, who told me, that Charlie was persistent. He was persistent and that was a good thing. He would work at a task and even though he didn't know how to do something or he ran into a roadblock or a glitch, he would keep going. Whereas other kids may kind of give up on something and move on to something else. He was persistent. He was going to get that right and get that done. Now, we look at that in the family and call him stubborn. But the teacher called it persistence, which is a good thing. The Canaanite woman was persistent. The story's been interpreted in a number of different ways, but scholars now look at it and say, yes, that there are two different ways we can look at this. That Jesus was using this in his, as an example to the disciples. Or that she was just persistent and changed his mind. That up until this point, and what he tells to her is that, I've come for the lost sheep of Israel. And she's Canaanite. She's not like him at all. She's a foreigner. And she comes begging for help. And she will not take no for an answer, asking at least for a crumb from the master's table. And from then on in the gospel, we see a broadening of the reach that it's not only to the children of Israel, but it is also to all people that the message can come and that God's grace is for all. Through our failures, through our faults, through all things that we do that don't turn out good, God is persistent too. So I think today's lessons and stories point us not to our own persistence, but to the persistence of God, who again reaches out and gathers us in and loves us with a fierce love, and that the mercy of God shows no boundaries. 
So we look at that and see the persistent love of God towards us. How can we help but be persistent in our faith, in our prayer? Someone has once said that we are persistent in our prayers not so that God will hear us, but so that we may finally hear God. So, dear friends, today I offer you persistence to have you remember God's persistence, that fierce love, forgiveness, grace, and mercy that comes to us time and time and time again, no matter what happens in our lives. Joseph beaten up by his brothers, thrown in a pit, sold off to slavery, thrown into jail, falsely accused. All of these things happen, and he is persistent in his faith and love for God. No matter what happens in our lives, may that be the example that we follow too that we strive to be persistent in our faith and our love and extend that to others too. Amen. I invite you to join me in the hymn of this day. It's number five, um, oops, my page slipped, 588. There are two tunes, 587, 588, and I think that 587 got copied on those large print bulletins, but it's 588 in the hymnal. The tune will be more familiar to you, and it fits in with today's um, lessons and today's um, speaking about that persistence and that love of God, for there is a wideness in God's mercy. Please stand as you are able and join in the hymn.
please join me as we share our beliefs with the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Generous and compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Unite us, O God, so that all who worship receive assurance and nourishment by faith. Rescue those who suffer from religious persecution. Lord, in your mercy. Empower us, O God, to advocate for those on the margins. Open the hearts of leaders in every nation to serve those who are most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Equip us, O God, with your love for our brothers and sisters. Heal the sick, comfort the grieving, and especially those who suffer from violence around the world this week. Feed the hungry and calm those in distress. Lord, in your mercy. Rouse us, O God, to pray with you with gladness. We give thanks for musicians, worship leaders, intercessors, and those who prepare the communion table, all who make our worship express and express our joy. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints who have deepened our lives of prayer. Gather us with them in endless praise of you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we place our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the mercy of Christ Jesus. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share God's love with one another. You may be seated as together we take this time to give back through our tithes and offerings, that our offerings continue to spread God's word and God's grace around the globe. And we are also pleased now to also see a little bit of what happened on the adult mission trip. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. In us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze With hope like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit come invade us now We are your church We need your power in us Your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste. 
wisdom here Let the darkness clear Show your mighty hand Heal our streets and land Set your church on fire Win this nation back Change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here We pray I invite you to please stand as you are able. Gracious God, as we witness how you uh, create new things and you restore all things to yourselves, we pray that you would recreate us. We thank you for these gifts and the, the opportunity we have to share these gifts. Now let us partis participate in this meal as we are transformed in your love. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you, and shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, body, this food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Together as one, we let the Spirit unite our hearts as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's love is persistent. God's love is consistent. And he invites us always, and again and again, to this table. 
all are invited to join in this meal, to remember that God's love is there for us always. You may be seated. We uh, re- uh, received communion today with the individual cup. Please take a p- uh, piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer by request. Um, afterwards, take uh, one of the cups. The outer ring has uh, red, red liquid, which, which is wine, and the inner uh, circle, which is the amber liquid, is grape juice. Come. God's table is prepared, and all are welcome. body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. invite you to stand as you are able. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements as we dismiss today. First of all, several people have asked uh, again about the um, educational mission in Africa that we heard about last week. Information sheets are back on the at the information desk about that. In case you wish to contribute to scholarship fund there, you can do that through the church. Information is on here about how to do that. And I know that that would be most appreciated to see that um, some child across the globe can have an education. Also on the information desk, there is um, a letter from our bishop in response to the violence that happened in Charlottesville. And so I know for some of you that want to read that, um, here it is here. You can also go online at the Metropolitan Chicago Synod, and the bishop's letter will be there also. And there are a few copies, too, that I copied out for you um, about the church policy, which is a social statement on race race, ethnicity, and culture. This was passed in 1993 by the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Um, we're not there yet, but um, in case you want to take a look and see what is included in that, that is out there for your information also. It's, a, it's an unusual time that we are living in, and I think um, years from now we will look back on this time, and so I urge you to be persistent in your prayer, but also be persistent in speaking out for what you know is right. Um, as, as things happen all the time, and so we need to be prepared as people of Christ um, to live out our faith. Um, along that note, too, I wanted you to be aware that um, we have received a request from the Islamic community in West Chicago, which has its, um, its mosque right across from Bartlett High School. They have a house there that they use, and they use shared space with the Methodist Church across the street from the high school, Good Shepherd, um, during their high holidays, which is Ramadan in the spring. Um, because of scheduling conflicts, Good Shepherd will not be able to accommodate them this year, and they have approached us and asked if they may use our space for prayers during Ramadan, during the month of Ramadan. This is um, next year in the spring. It would be approximately May 15th to June 15th, and their prayer services would be from 10 o'clock p.m., to about midnight, so it's a time when we're not using our building. Um, but they would be using the fellowship hall because that is more conducive to their prayer services. Um, they would not be in the sanctuary space. And before agreeing to this, as we talked about it on console, we wanted to have your feedback. Um, so you received a little note, a little information thing with your bulletin today that has all the council's contact information as well as mine. So it's helpful if you would give us your feedback. Um, written is best, um, and anonymous feedback is not received. So please let us know who you are and um, let us know your comments um, as we consider um, these requests to um, accommodate another faith community within our own community of Bartlett. As we go forward now um, out into the world, Again, be persistent in your faith and your prayers as God is persistent in God's love for you and for all people. So receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join in our closing hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West. It's number 650.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.